right. Are you ready? <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Uh, when my grandson makes a basket when he's playing basketball, I always say, that's my grandson. <laughs> Look at this kid. Mintz finishes. Lefford by Mintz. And Mintz. I want to be looked at as the best point guard in college basketball. The reverse oh. by Mintz. Incredible. You would tell him, you a beast, Judah. Nobody know about you, man. I mean, I really just think about John Thompson and, and Coach Beheim going at it. Watching people like AI play. Iverson, NBA three. Iverson. I wear three. I wear the cornrows sometimes in the headband. Like, seeing him play versus Syracuse and seeing Thompson and Beheim, like, that's just legendary. It's definitely a blessing to be a part of the matchup. John Thompson started the whole thing in 1980 when Syracuse had the great run at Manley Fieldhouse, and John Thompson's team won the last game there, and Thompson said Manley Fieldhouse is officially closed. When John Thompson said Manley Fieldhouse is officially closed, the Syracuse-Georgetown rivalry officially had begun. The Georgetown brought to the table was this classic villain in the shape and in the body of John Thompson. John Thompson loved being a villain. Thompson's going to get tossed out of here. Of course, as John's walking out, he's looking up and he's doing that, you know, like, go ahead, bring it on, bring it on. It was just one of those kind of landmark moments that spoke to the Syracuse-Georgetown rivalry. I mean, I've been excited for it since I, I learned that we go back and forth last year. I knew we, we had a chance to come here if I stayed and, and played Georgetown at the crib, so. I mean, to say I'm excited would be an understatement. Come on, man. She didn't even tell me she wasn't coming to Y. I thought that was Can we wash my hands back in your head? Hey, waiting for you. I feel like it's going to be special. I don't want to put too much pressure on myself to perform, but at the same time, I, I want to put on a show for my people. Judah has always known that he wanted to be a basketball player. Kamara, of course, play basketball in college. So he bought him a little hoop, yeah. And so, you know, he would just put that ball in that thing, you know, all day. And, and he was only like one and a half, two years old. He didn't say daddy first. He didn't say mama. His first word was ball before he said dad, mama, food, bottle, anything. He said ball. By the time he got to middle school, like sixth grade, I recognized that He'll probably have an opportunity to go to college for free. Seventh grade year, I realized like he's probably gonna play high major basketball. He's gonna, he's gonna be better than me. He's playing for Team Takeover, which is one of the best AAU programs in the country back then, still is today. And he was the best player on that team, which allowed him to play all over the country and play against the kids that were, at the time, supposed to be the best kids in his class. All these kids with these names, they ranked this and ranked that, and he's punishing people. And so it was even further confirmed for me that he's got a chance to, to, to be special. My husband and I would just, we went everywhere with them. After a while, Judah, he was getting older. There are more responsibilities and there are other places that you go with basketball. And so if his parents couldn't take him, Papa, my husband, Papa, Papa would take Judah everywhere he wanted to go. At a time, my dad had to go back to, he went back to school, he went back to law school. We had to move with my grandparents for, for a little bit for the time being while he was in school. That's really when I started becoming real close to my grandfather. Judah and Papa have a very special relationship. They were just two peas in a pod. My husband likes, he liked to joke. He liked to scare people. We would pick him up from somewhere, drop him off at home, and he would get out the car and say, okay, bye, Baldy. 
know. And so they would start calling each other these crazy names, you know. But I mean, that was their relationship. Since he started playing basketball, he was a, he didn't miss. My father was the first person that took Judah to an AAU tournament, but he had hurt himself anyway. He had injured himself. He wasn't gonna be able to play. I think it was about second grade. I broke my wrist right before nationals. He flew with me to Orlando just to watch my team play. I didn't even play. And he had a blast with his grandfather. Like they went to the games. He did whatever with the team. Papa would take Judah somewhere and just sit in the car. He don't care if he was going to be in there two, three hours. It didn't make a difference. Papa was going to read a book. He was going to take a nap. He'd go get something to eat. He would do. He never complained about it. He just wanted Judah to fulfill his dream. everybody and welcome to Capital One Arena. We're in D.C. today. The nation's capital once again hosts Syracuse and Georgetown as the Orange come on the road with a 6-3 and three record, taking on the 5-3 and three Hoyas in their annual meeting. A lot of fun. Early start, 11.30. Where else would you rather be? At the end of the day, guys, it's Syracuse versus Georgetown. That's it. All we come in here to do is win. That's all that matters. Not how you play, it's how we play. That's it. This game comes around every year. Pretty fun every time at Circus and Georgetown. It feels like a conference game. It's an exciting game. It's a big game. It's a crucial game for both teams, honestly. The lights have gone out at uh, Capital One Arena. The students doing a nice job waving their phone flashlight for the introduction. Or Adrian Autry certainly had his games as a player against the Hoyas and now an opportunity to meet them as a head coach. J.J. Starling, 6'4 sophomore. He's joined in the backcourt by Judah Mintz at the lead guard spot. He is a native of Fort Washington, Maryland, so this is a bit of a homecoming for Judah, the 6'4 sophomore. Crowd has filled in a little bit, biggest crowd this year for Georgetown. Naeem McLeod, the jump setter against Supreme Cook. Once he got to high school, like I said, ninth grade, I mean, we really knew. It was a joy. Like, every time I would see him, certain things he does on the court to this day, me and my husband might look at each other and say, oh, snap. <laughs> like, like, did he just do that? He's going to get the corner, and he'll take off. And the first one out of way! Five for shoot. Mintz knows it. Got to get it off. It goes Ooh. down. Here's Mintz. Man, that was a tough shot that he made. And then from there, from high school, it was like, he's getting better and better. Like every time we watched him play, one of his trainers said, that's because he works. He's a, he just works. Like he, he wants to work, he likes to work. It's a joy to work. And he's more than capable. Oh, Judah Mintz read that one the whole way. His papa was very much like, he started seeing Judah set his goals. He wanted to move up to ESPN. His papa was calling him like, I see you moved up, I see, you know, so they would have this thing. He would tell him, you a beast, Judah. Don't, nobody know about you, man. Not aggressive. Here he is on the steal, right to the rack and jamming it home. See Livingston with the D as well, Mintz again! Showing why he's one of the top players in the junior class. Mintz for three. His um, senior year, his papa was back and forth in the hospital, so he could never go to Oak Hill and see him. So when he started seeing his grandfather in the hospital and things like that, it started really messing with him a little bit. They telling me like, yeah, he getting better, he getting better. I come home for a break. They like, you ready to come with us to see papa? I'm thinking we going to the house to see him. We end up going to a hospital. Like, just seeing him like every time get worse and worse, like. That was the most frustrating thing I would say when he was sick. Okay, Judah, the time has come. You're about to make one college program and one coach very happy. Where are you headed to school next season? Yes, sir. Uh, next year, I'll be attending Syracuse University. Go Cuse. His papa was super excited that he decided to go to Syracuse. When Red called me, it was, you know, I had DePaul, I had some other options, but Syracuse was just, 
I could pass up on it. What separated Syracuse from the other schools? Uh, Syracuse, it, it had a really good opportunity for me to come in and be able to point guard as a freshman. It was a great opportunity, and I, I couldn't pass up on it. Bell at quarter quarter on the near sideline. One minute gone, 4-2 Hoyas. Bell against Cook. Watch the three after a pass back from Mitz, and the three is pure for Chris Bell. The Orange have the lead back at 5 4. Short here goes. A couple of points in the paint. Supreme Cook gets the Hoyas on the board. Mitz accelerates into the paint. Mitz fouled as he puts it up. Whoa. Big shot is good for Judah. 10 to shoot for Georgetown. There's the three, and that's good. Syracuse with an open look from three, and it's good. Nice keep it going. That one will count for Cook. These two teams have only missed one shot thus far. This game has to be a game of, of a couple of things. It's about being disciplined. Takes another one away. Third steal for Brumble. And a bump from Chris Bell. And face to face, here's the rivalry. Syracuse on the move. Numbers for the Orange. And able to convert. Give it go for Mintz. Beautiful. That's just a, a next level move. I mean, this building is is awesome right now. Syracuse 35, Georgetown 34 at the half. We got to keep playing defense. You see, when we get back, they can't score. All we're thinking about is Syracuse, not anything else. I don't care if you missed a shot. I don't care if you made a mistake. All right, it's all about getting the W today. All right, all right, let's go. Twenty more minutes. Together on three, y'all. Together on three. One, two, three. Together. I tell people all the time, whatever your child does in high school, forget about it when they go to college. We had nothing in our head that said his freshman year was going to be what it was. We knew he was going to do a good job, you know, play decent, whatever. But the numbers that he got as a freshman, okay. Like, he might have, we might have some here. Trouble to get it across, and now Mitz oh! to the rim with a one-handed stop. He is so tough. Stolen away by Mitz. He's off to the races. He's going to slam it down. Shook the defender, hit the shot, free from Mintz. I think a lot of people were really stunned by it. Other people said, well, what did we miss, like, in his evaluations? Because something is off. Here's Mintz. Mintz with time, drives it, and scores it. Judah was not a point guard in high school. Never, ever. Never played that. Matter of fact, he had a coach that said you would never play point guard. That's what he did. Freshman year, he's doing it now. Leg, and it comes out for the orange. Mintz finding ground. One of the better passes in the ACC. That is a beautiful dime. That's why he's one of the best guards in college basketball. Judah Mintz's dream is to play in the NBA. And the way the rules are set up, there's really no downside to putting your name in the draft going through the process and then making a well-informed decision in a few months. The point guard plans to maintain his college eligibility. So that means Mintz has until 11.59 p.m. of April 13th to decide if he wants to go pro or come back to school. Even going through the NBA process, my father was still here. So he would talk to Judah or, you know, and Judah would go see him and they would talk. I thought I at least had some time to get to the NBA first. That's really all I was asking for. That was one of my biggest reasons for being so bent on making it now. Like, I wanted to make sure that he saw it. Like, I'm like, whether they put me on a two-way, anything, whatever, he gonna see me there, like, before he go. I was in the house watching television. My wife came upstairs and she told me that he was going to the hospital. All we knew is that he was going to the hospital and they were gonna call us and give us more information about when he got there, where he was, all that kind of stuff. And then about a half hour later, she came upstairs and um, she kind of just stood in the door. She said, uh, she said, he's gone. That was, uh, that was tough. That was really, really, really tough. I got a text in the airport. I was on a layover. My friend Tyson from church texted me. He was like, I'm sorry for your loss. He was a good man. I'm like, yo, what are you always joking? Like, stop playing around. Like, what are you talking about? So then I ended up calling Wiz, my little brother, obviously, and then he just told me. I could only remember a little bit. Like, after that, I just recall, I cried for, until my next flight. 
And I cried all the way home. And I cried to the next day. Hearing that news was shattering. When Judah found out he passed, that was a big hole, a big hole. Because he wanted him to see him achieve something that he felt they both worked for together. He always was trying to build me up. He was always tell me how good I am, who I was gonna be, what I was gonna do before I could even see it for myself. And for me to be here right now and doing what I'm doing, like it hurts still, but I just know he's so proud, bro. Right? And I'm, I'm proud how far I was able to get with him. And I'm, I'm happy that he was ever in my life, man. He, he made me who I am. Start of the second half here, 35-34 is the lead at the break for the Qs. For Mintz, playing in front of a lot of family and friends for maybe the only time. They might not come back here to Georgetown for a couple of years. Orange ball to start the second half, right end with a one-point lead. Starters on the floor for both teams. Mintz got helped out by the rim to keep that ball in play. The three is good wow. in the corner by Starling. And, and what a great job by Mintz to keep. Look at this kid. Takes it away. Wow. Mintz finishes. Boy, he is a special player. Starling, the shot clock winding down. That's big time. Here's a three by Starling. Got the hot hand for the orange. Starling's jumper. That's good. Back and forth we go. See the pressure from Georgetown easily broken by Syracuse. Mintz right to the cup. He's got 25. You can see his mind working once he got across half court. Looking up, it's a little harder to do, but you have to step up and help a teammate out. Mintz picking the pocket of Epps. Three on nothing. Mintz! And the Orange have one in D.C. Syracuse to the top. Let's go! Let's go, baby! We were tough the second half. Like I said, good teams won on the road. Good teams won on the road, and we did that today. Hey, bring it in, man. Bring it in. I think it kind of keeps, keeps defenses on their heels a lot. If I could say anything to my grandfather right now, I just want to tell him that he did a great job. He left me with something that can't be taken from me. I just want to let him know how much I appreciate him. Go Jude! Homecoming, baby. Homecoming. <laughs> I want you to, to understand that Papa will always be with him. Papa would tell Judah right now to be relentless. Finish the race that you so desperately want and deserve. Finish it for him. Finish it for you. I love you, Judah.
Keep going. Mommy's so proud of you. I love you. I gotta tell you something. Oh, that was good, Monty. Come on. Okay. <laughs> put me in with when I say this that you know we love you, but we really appreciate all you do for us. And since we were little, even when you're not 100 percent coming to pick us up, taking us to practices, school, and everything, you know, taking us to Sonic. <laughs> 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 Oh, that's awesome. Yay.